Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I want to give a quick update on an inflection point while we're in between events over here. Uh, but anyway, we got to talk about this inflection point that I've been reading about all morning here. And it's really this inflection point in freight and what it could mean for the market and some stocks that we're investing in, maybe shorting or not investing in, right? So let's touch on some of these stats quickly here. So there's the impression amongst shippers and freight companies that rates are going to fall. In fact, 33% of shippers expect prices to fall and 58% expect them to be flat uh, but their outlook of how overwhelmed they're going to be is down 26 percent year over year and they think they're heading back to 2020 levels in terms of how comfortable they felt with what they call fluidity now they actually note that so far their demand for like products like the end user demand is still solid but fluidity has improved so much that shippers feel like, uh-oh, okay, this is going to start squeezing prices down. Because even though we still have, or at least are seeing similar levels of end user demand, we're seeing more availability for flatbeds, trucks, shipping. It's easier to secure loads. Uh, and so now there's the expectation that rates might quite frankly, fall off a cliff over the next three months. Uh, now, only some folks think rates are going to fall off a cliff, about 33% uh, think we're gonna fall off a cliff in terms of shipping rates, 58% thinking, no, we're gonna stay flat with rates, but this is a really good note, and it's something to know for us going forward in terms of investing, because, we well, see, one of the successful trades I had this year was shorting Zim, uh, a shipping stock, and so I've been expecting that these shipping stocks are going to get hit, because one of the things that happens is when we have this fear about supply chains, we like to run into shipping stocks, and last week, somebody he was saying like, oh, Kevin, you know, should I hedge my portfolio by going into shipping stocks? And, you know, look, I can't give financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. But my view is that usually the worst time to get in on something is when it's already had its run, right? Like that's usually when you're starting to peak out and we're seeing that. So what's fascinating about the note though is that maybe we're not actually seeing that peak yet in user demand. I mean, people are still traveling, spending money like crazy. We know that. We're not seeing that demand reduce yet, but we're seeing some fears that maybe, maybe at companies like Under Armour and, uh, and, and uh, you know, Wayfair, they're thinking, okay, yeah, it's a lot easier and we're seeing this it's a lot easier for us to get product now that means we're gonna slow our price increases down so we have that product but we're no longer having to use air freight as much we're able to get uh, containers on vessels and they can actually come in a reasonable period of time this is sort of raising the argument that gosh what if in a year we look back and we're like oh man Kathy Wood was right we end up getting piles of inventory, right? And then prices come down, we get that deflation. Inflation ends up being transitory. <laughs> They'll end up being uh, bittersweet, obviously, for folks like J-Pow and Kathy. But anyway, things to pay attention to. Now, what do I think about uh, investing strategies going forward? Well, as always, like I mentioned yesterday, get ready for real estate. I'm thinking Q4 to Q2 of next year. So you want to become an expert in real estate. If you're not familiar with that yet, seriously, zero to millionaire real estate investing. You could be a know nothing in real estate and come out knowing more than, in my opinion, MBAs or real estate agents or brokers or whatever, because you want to learn from people who invest in real estate. Really, really important, right? Buy and hold long-term real estate. So check that coupon code out down below. Very important. But otherwise, also, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to be, we already know this, in consumer discretionaries. We don't want to be in shipping stocks. We want to be where the pain is, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, those pain stocks, not so much seeing it right now. I mean, obviously this is, you know, in, in Disney and some of the travel stocks, you're seeing a lot of demand like crazy, but their stocks aren't really reflecting it. And so you have to ask yourself, where can you be that's not consumer discretionary, that isn't a flight to safety? Uh, in my opinion, and I know this sounds like a, a broken record, but it's it continues to be a luxury product, luxury style consumer discretionary, and uh, something that probably could withstand a, a, a removal of demand during a recession. And uh, to me, the, the only one that really knocks or checks all these things off the list right now, benefits from supply chain improvements, uh, benefits from uh, luxury consumer demand, right? Tesla. I hate to say it. People get mad at me for saying that, but uh, yeah. Anyway, Max, do you want to say anything? No. No? All right. Well, thanks for being here, Max. What do you, do you want to say anything, Jack? Um, the rides are really fun. All right, let's go. You guys ready? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm so glad we just washed your hands because I told you to stop putting your hands in your mouth. Well, the good thing we just washed them, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the next one. Links down below. <laughs> Good luck out there. Seriously, leave a comment down below if you think there's something better than, you know, hey, shipping costs go down, Tesla. Hey, luxury demand. We're in a recession, no problem. We got access to demand. Tesla, right? Uh, so anyway, let me know what you think. Bye.